This is the story of the Legion of the United States, America's first organized federal army following the revolution. The Legion was ahead of its time, pioneering the use of combined arms tactics as well as the integration of irregular warfare. In many ways, the Legion more closely resembles the army of today than later evolutions of the army throughout the 19th century. Please join me as I cover the early defeats on the American frontier that provided the catalyst for forming America's first professional fighting force under the Constitution, the novel organization and tactics of the Legion, as well as the conflict in the Northwest Territories that would set the precedent for future westward expansion. If you like this content, please consider to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. In the early days of the American Republic, with the ink on the Constitution still fresh, the fledgling United States government had a problem. Following the end of the revolution, many were suspicious of a standing army, including some of the founding fathers. Due to this, the new Congress was unsure of how the US should structure and maintain a fighting force. Indeed, there was a short period of time after the disbanding of the Continental Army that the entirety of the US Army consisted of only a couple hundred men, whose sole job was to guard military supplies. Meanwhile, while the nascent government tried to decide this matter, the Northwest frontier was festering with violence. In 1785, the army grew to one single infantry regiment. A small and poorly trained force, this unit was mostly meant to man forts and augment militia forces. In 1789, the 1st American Regiment was ordered to the Northwest frontier to quell native rebellions that were terrorizing settlers. These rebellions were being instigated and armed by the British who refused to leave the territory following the end of the revolution. What would follow would be a series of embarrassments for the young American army and government. The expedition set out from Fort Washington in the Ohio Territory and was led by Lieutenant Colonel Harmar. His ill-provisioned force of 300 regulars and 1,000 militia was quickly defeated by the native and British Confederacy. George Washington personally ordered a follow-up expedition led by the territorial governor, General Arthur St. Clair, Congress quickly authorized a 2nd American Regiment to be formed to augment what remained of the 1st American Regiment and St. Clair's militia. General St. Clair set out in 1791. Within two months of the start of the expedition, the Americans were attacked in camp by the Western Confederacy, now being masterfully led by Little Turtle and Blue Jacket. The Americans were decimated. St. Clair's defeat remains one of the worst in U.S. Army history by proportion of forces involved. Over half of St. Clair's combined force was killed or wounded. Three quarters of the brand new 2nd Infantry Regiment was lost, including all of the artillery. The defeat of Harmar and St. Clair left the Northwest Territories only nominally under the control of the US government. These shocking losses rocked the young United States and caused a shift in thinking. Immediately, Congress recognized the need for a professional standing army. Congress authorized the creation of a much more significant force and President Washington chose General Mad Anthony Wayne, one of his former subordinates in the revolution, to lead it. Under the recommendations of many of his most trusted former generals, to include Henry Knox and Baron von Steuben, it was decided that this new force would be structured and trained in a novel new format, breaking from the old traditions of strict linear warfare that was fought by regiments separated by maneuver function. This new force was to be called the Legion of the United States. The Legion would combine all land combat branches of the day, being cavalry, heavy infantry, light infantry and artillery, into one organic brigade-sized force that was divisible into their own standalone combined arms teams. The Legion consisted of four sub-legions. Each sub-legion was a self-contained unit, structured to operate completely independent from the Legion as a whole. Each sub-legion consisted of two battalions of heavy infantry, one battalion of light infantry riflemen, one troop of light dragoons, and one company of artillery. The Legion also had a detachment of rangers, experts on backcountry frontier warfare, to be used as irregular troops, scouts, and for gathering intelligence. It is not a stretch to compare these formations to the modern combined arms organization of the US Army, essentially being the 18th century equivalent to the brigade combat team. The Legion absorbed the remnants of the defeated 1st and 2nd American regiments and quickly began filling with recruits. They mustered near Pittsburgh, where General Wayne founded the US Army's first basic training camp at what would eventually be called Legionville. 
The Legion would then be trained using an incredibly strict regimen of discipline, drills and tactics. Some of these tactics were also novel for their time, with General Wayne putting a heavy emphasis on screening, skirmishing and frontier tactics characterized by use of surprise, dispersion and cover. Wayne intentionally established Legionville away from Pittsburgh in order to discourage the temptation of sin within the frontier city. Strict adherence to appearance was emphasized, with 20 lashes being the punishment for a dirty uniform or unkept hair. Standards were established and enforced. General Wayne ordered copies of Baron von Steuben's Guide for the Old Continental Army. The regulations for the order and discipline of the troops of the United States be disseminated across all the soldiers and be feverishly adhered to. In order to qualify as a light infantryman, General Wayne required a soldier be able to hit a target at 200 yards. Heavy infantry were drilled intensely until they were able to meet the standard of firing a volley every 15 seconds. The old heavy cannons were used to defend forts, while Wayne ordered light howitzers that were much easier to quickly maneuver on horseback. Within half a year, General Wayne had transformed the ill-disciplined, poorly equipped and defeated ragtag remnants of the US Army into the well-trained, meticulously organized and firmly led Legion of the United States. Their first campaign would be to avenge the defeats on the northwest frontier of the previous few years. Their task was not an easy one. The Western Confederacy was battle-hardened and knew the land better than they did. Those native forces had previously devastated two American armies and had cunning leaders at their helm. The British still occupied the region and provided training and equipment to their native allies. But with the frontier aflame and settlers calling for aid, the young legion set off to bring peace to the territories and set the precedence for American westward expansion. In the next chapter, I will cover the major events of the Northwest Campaign, the climactic Battle of Fallen Timbers and the treachery that would contribute to the downfall of the Legion itself. Please consider subscribing for more tales of heroism, valor and military history. Legends never die as long as their stories live on. Thank you for watching.